Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy that you guys enjoyed the patio makeover and loved the chairs just as much as I do. I had so much fun making them. I'm so glad all of the measurements came together. It was an accomplishment. So if you guys haven't checked out my patio makeover, I'll leave it linked down below so that you can. Also, Romeo and I took a trip to Texas to see my parents and we went thrift shopping all in Texas all the way back through Arizona. I have a huge home decor thrift haul over on my vlog channel. So if you guys haven't checked that out and you're not subscribed to the vlog channel, you should be, you should check it out. I'll leave that linked down below too. So today we're gonna be doing fun DIYs. You guys love when I do DIY bohemian style decor. And I was like, well, we could do other styles, not just bohemian. So I asked you guys over on Instagram if you wanted mid-century modern or Scandinavian style DIY home decor. And it was pretty half-half, but there was more on the mid-century modern side. So we are gonna be DIYing mid-century modern home decor. And then of course we'll do the Scandinavian too, because why not? <laughs> Something that's really popular or really common in mid-century modern decor are these retro style white globes. But most of the time you see them on lighting. What could that shape also become? Maybe we could use the shape and just use the globe and not do a light, but use the globe and turn it into a kind of retro style globe candle. So let's see if that can work. I was like, what else is that shape that I could use? And I was like, ooh, fish bowl is that shape or a vase that's just round with a flat pedestal bottom. I looked on Amazon quickly and they were kind of expensive. Like I was like, I don't really want to pay this much. And I was like, I always see fish bowls at the thrift store. And I found fish bowls or round vases, if you will, at the thrift store. And they're flat bottom, so they work perfectly. These were $1.99. I bought two just in case I mess up. You know, you never know. Or I can make two candles. And then how to make it the frosted. I'm actually gonna test this out a little bit before kind of diving in. So I picked up a chalky classic white spray paint. I want it to look frosty, like frosted. I feel like that retro globe kind of looks that way. So I also picked up this frosted glass spray paint. So I'm curious to see the combination of the two to see if we can really get that retro look for the glasses. And then I always like to look at at TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross, places where they have soy candles at a discounted price. Retail price of $15, then they were marked down to $8.99, and then again at $6.49. So this is a 15 ounce candle, so that's not bad. And you're also going to need some candle wicks. After testing out both the frosted gloss and the chalk white, I just decided to go with the chalk white, and then I sprayed the bowl upside down so that it didn't get any paint on the inside where we're gonna put the candle. I find that what works best on glass is chalk paint. Get a large pot in your kitchen and put water in it and bring it to a boil and then turn it down to simmer so that we can start to melt our candles. So mine is at a simmer right now. These little silicone gloves and then you're gonna put it right in the center. And wait for it to melt. So our new retro style glass globe is ready and we need to take a little bit of wax and actually stick the bottom of our candle wicks into the bottom of our new candle holder. So dip it in the wax and get it on the bottom and then move into here and wait for it to dry. Okay, so I'm just gonna take these wooden skewers. We basically need to wrap the wick around the stick so it stays in place when we're pouring in the wax and let it rest on the edge of the candle holder. All melted, exactly 45 minutes for both of these candles to melt. So next we wanna just take out these wicks because we don't want them falling. So I'm just using some tweezers. If you're gonna do a smaller candle, you could actually reuse these wicks. Okay, huge disclaimer, please be careful. Last time I did this, I may have burned myself, but just be careful. And last time I made a mess, so I made this little dress for my candle and I just cut a hole in some wax paper so that I wouldn't get it absolutely everywhere. Now we pour this wax into the new holder. So that's how high up one went, and I did get some drippage. Just kind of letting it slide down. I don't know how to not make it slide down the glass, so I'm just kind of letting it do it and pour it from that side. 
then we're just gonna let it cool but don't throw it into the fridge just let it cool at room temperature and then we just need to cut the wick quarter inch above the candle wax and then we'll see what it looks like DIY, I knew I really wanted to do a piece of furniture in some way. Mid-century modern furniture is so popular and is incorporated into so many different other styles. You'll see it in Scandinavian decor, you'll see it in contemporary. It's good. <laughs> so something that's really common is tapered round legs. Sometimes you'll see them with caps on them as well. I feel like benches are so versatile, especially in entryways or at the foot of a bed. A simple mid-century modern style bench would be perfect in any home. I have two different bench ideas for you. And the first one is much simpler. So I picked up these mid-century modern legs from Amazon and they come in lots of different heights. I went with the 12 inch height because I was gonna be adding lots of height on top of the legs for the bench. So those you don't have to make. So we're just talking about the actual surface that you're gonna sit on. So my simple bench design is just picking up a solid piece of wood in a size that you want your bench to be, whether it's gonna be four foot long or six foot long. So since you're just getting one piece of wood, all you need to do is simply attach the legs to the piece of wood and then stain it or paint it whatever color you want. And there you go, wham, bam, boom, you got a, you got a bench. Of course I wanna do it a little more complicated. <laughs> so the bench that I want to make is kind of a slatted top bench. So it's got wood pieces that are stood on its side and they're placed about a half an inch from each other to create this really interesting look but it's super simple and versatile with any decor. I headed to Lowe's and picked up six eight foot long three by ones and they're three inches wide by an inch deep and these are just rounded numbers. They're actually a little smaller. They actually measure more like two and a half by three quarter. You're also gonna need one eight foot long at four by one. And this is gonna kind of be how we put all of these slats together. A huge tip when picking up wood is that you wanna make sure the wood pieces that you're buying are actually really straight. The first thing that we're gonna do is cut the boards in half. So I bought eight feet so that our finished measurement on our bench is going to be four foot wide. So I noticed that the boards weren't exactly eight foot so I did have to cut a little sliver off and you do want to make sure that these are all the same size. Then I laid them out because I'm a very visual person to determine how wide I needed our brace pieces to be and it needed to be 14 and a half. So we're going to cut three 14 and a half pieces of our four inch wide pieces of wood. Then I gave it all a good sand each piece and even sanded down the taper legs because I really wanted it to be stained all the same color. After testing out some stains, some were just too dark and I went with English chestnut which I thought was perfect for this kind of mid-century modern vibe and stained not only the legs but also all of the pieces of wood. Okay, this is somewhat how it's going to look on the top. All of these are going to be standing up so they're going to be taller than they are thick and they're going to create these slats. And we are going to attach the four inch pieces that we cut are going to become the braces, so to speak. So it's going to be the way that we connect them all so that they all stay together. And then it's also what we're going to be connecting the legs to. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope it makes sense. Uh oh, we have a, an assistant coming in. We're going to drill pilot holes into the bottoms of these in three spots, seven inches in from each side and then also right in the middle so at 24 inches this will just help to get some of the wood out of the hole so that we don't have any weird wood splitting so you can see all of the pilot holes are here so we have three sets and then what we're gonna be doing is putting this on top and then using our wood screws. I have 
two inch screws because that's all they had at Lowe's when I went. Preferably I would be using two and a half inch. So we're just gonna be attaching this right on top and then using wood screws to go in all the places. I'm also gonna drill pilot holes in this as well. Evenly distribute the boards. They're gonna be half inch apart. So there's gonna be a half inch space between each slat. Attach the front and the back ones first on everything so it kind of stays where I need it to be. So last step is the legs and sometimes you'll see these legs are sold with just a screw coming out of it that you can just simply screw into. Oh, hello. Yes, I'm telling him about the legs. These actually didn't come with that. It came with a plate itself. So the legs can only be straight up and down, not kind of tilted like that, which I'm okay with. And then just use the three quarter inch screws to do these four so it's gonna stay. Okay, so now we just need to attach the legs. I'm thinking I only want them about an inch in, so I'm gonna take this kind of see-through ruler so I can see where an inch is and mark it like that. And then I'll know exactly where. Also, I'm gonna be using three quarter inch screws because this section is clearly a lot smaller than what we were working with before, so these will fit just right. DIY, you guys know that I love to create my own art. I love to paint art in almost every room makeover and throughout my entire house. I love that it puts my unique stamp on a room and no one's ever gonna have something quite like it. And mid-century modern art is actually really simple. It's very graphic shapes and geometric shapes like you'll see circles and squares and half half circles, half, half moon circles? No, not half moon circles, half, just half circles. <laughs> They can stand alone or you can create gallery walls with mid-century modern art. So I actually want to do two pieces of art today, all with acrylic paints, all super simple, and then we're going to frame them. So let's get started. I really like having larger size pads like this because then you can cut it down to whatever frame size you have. I'm going to grab my frame and just use this back cardboard piece um, as a template to see Okay, exactly how big I need my paper to be. So for our first painting, I just want it to be kind of like geometric and abstract and just blocks of color. So I actually want the background painted as well. I don't want it stark white. So I'm gonna use this Titan buff color and paint the entire background kind of roughly, I guess. I want kind of like a rectangle here in a darker color. If you want a perfect square, you can ta use tape and actually tape off the section that you're gonna paint and then just pull off the tape. Um, but I think I'm just gonna freehand this one. I don't think I want it perfect. So I'm just gonna use a ruler. So I just kind of drew a very light square. And now I'm gonna use Mars Black, which kind of, it's a Blick Studio acrylic paint. do like a circle so I have this glass you just need something round to kind of trace the circle onto your paper so that you can 
paint in the middle of it. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, maybe I want the objects to start to overlap some. And then just trace your circle. I'm gonna use this honey brown color. And then I'll use this little bit of a more round brush to trace the circle and fill it in. Acrylic paints are super easy to work with. So if you guys want to try your hand at creating your own art, I would highly suggest using acrylic paints and then just one of these pads of paper. And then for the bottom half of the circle, I'm actually gonna use the same color as the background. Maybe look like it wasn't even there. I'm definitely gonna do another circle. I'm thinking about, since it has this smaller circle on the bottom, I'm just gonna flip the, the what's this called? <laughs> the cup, the glass, the glass over. I'm gonna do it the same color. Next, I want to do kind of um, like rainbow lines, basically, but upside down, starting at the top and kind of going loop, 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 loop. So a lot of you guys ask me if I have some favorite paints or favorite brushes, and I really don't. I really don't pay a ton for my art supplies. I just kind of like to play around with it. I think it needs to have something going all the way across the canvas, all the way across the paper from side to side. For our second painting, I also don't want the background pure white, but I want it a little lighter than the last one. So I'm gonna try this vintage white. Oh yeah, I think it's gonna be lighter for sure. Really loved this wallpaper that I saw on El Decor. And it was just not daffodils. So you know the, the flowers that you blow into and then all of the, the little fuzzies, the little flowers like fly away in the wind. But it kind of reminded me of that but with yellow accents. So we're gonna be using cradium yellow deep hue gray and also some pins because that's how we're gonna create those little line shapes. That's how we're gonna kind of create those. So we're gonna have to do all the painting first and then go back over it with the pin. All of the flowers are kind of like different shapes. Some are like more oval, some are circles, some are like half. Circles, so we're gonna kind of position our flowers and then go from there. I think I kind of like the 08 and this one. Start with the stems and then go from there. These two are kind of sideways. So it's the side of the flower and then the rest of them I drew is like circles. So it's gonna have the lines coming off all around the circle versus these are gonna be kind of just going up. So cute so far. So now I'm just gonna use some gray and make these kind of, just kind of gray lines that they have just going side to side. But I guess this kind of works because I used the gray line in the other picture so they'll kind of complement each other.
you guys enjoyed these DIY mid-century modern decor items. I can't wait to do more in different styles too. I've already done some contemporary DIYs that I did on some thrifted items and I've done of course boho. Next we can do Scandinavian or if you guys have any suggestions I would love for you guys to comment below what style you are and what home decor styles you would like to see. If you guys aren't already subscribed to my channel I post new DIY room makeovers, thrift flips on my channel every Sunday so hit that subscribe button and if you guys want a behind the scenes look, thrift hauls or just following along as I you know create my way through life definitely check out my vlog channel I'll leave it linked below and I will see you guys next week for another video bye guys say hello hello guys how are you how are you are you doing good <laughs> you're so cute Kinsley